Hey everyone, so today I'm gonna to show you how to make Greek yogurt in your Instant Pot. This is actually really simple. It's only two ingredients, but the hard part is that it kinda of takes some time. So I typically tell people you need about 24 hours. Um, and really the only hard part is making sure you've got your settings right, and also making sure that you um, are considering your time. So for the first step here, there's kinda of three steps. Um, for the first step here, you wanna make sure that you're gonna be home for about an hour and a half to two hours. After that, you've got sort of these long stretches of time where um, you can just leave it and let it do its own thing, but you are gonna need to be around for, um, for the first two hours of this process. So um, let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is tell you this is just um, sort of the standard model Instant Pot, and then your two ingredients. So. We're gonna do a half gallon of milk. Um, you can do 2%, whole, 1%, whatever you prefer. This is 2%. And then you're also gonna need yogurt. So this is just Chobani. Um, that's what I'm using. This is just plain, non-fat yogurt. And you're really only gonna need two tablespoons. So this is just the, the only two ingredients that you're going to need. And then as far as supplies, um, a towel, things can get kind of messy. You're gonna need a whisk. You're definitely going to need a thermometer. So I've just got an instant read thermometer here, a tablespoon, um, a small bowl, and then you're gonna need a strainer, a bowl to strain into, um, just something that it can sit up in so that the liquid can sit in the bottom. And then you're gonna need some coffee filters. So I typically use four or five coffee filters. So for the first step here, what we're gonna do is scald the milk. The second step is going to be um, sort of the cooking process, which is like an eight to 10 hour process. And then the last step of it is just straining it, which I let it strain overnight. So you don't wanna start this too late in the day. Um, I definitely, the first time I did this, ended up having to get up at midnight um, after the eight hours was up. So make sure you think about the time. If you can start it earlier in the day, that's better. And like I said, it's gonna strain overnight. So let's get started with the first step. So I've got my Instant Pot plugged in, and all I'm gonna do is go ahead and take the milk and just pour it in. And you can clean your pot before you start doing the steaming setting, um, and I've already done that. So. My pot's clean, I'm just gonna pour the whole thing in. And you can make it with a whole gallon. I find that the consistency and texture is a little bit different than if you just do a half gallon at a time. So I prefer to go with a half gallon. Um, also, you can, um, it, it doesn't really matter if you have it set to sealing or venting. I do it set to sealing just because that's kind of what I've always done. So I'm just gonna put the lid on and I'm backwards. So there we go. All right, so on my pot, I'm gonna go ahead and push the yogurt button and I'm gonna push it again until it says boil. And so now what it's gonna do is it's gonna scald the milk and this process can take anywhere from um, 15, 20, maybe even 30 minutes, depending on how much milk you've got in here. So I pushed boil and now it's beeped so it's ready to go. And like I said, this will take about 20 minutes typically. And what it's gonna do is bring the milk up to um, a 180 degrees. So that's when you're gonna need your thermometer. So after it beeps, just like it normally does, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna check it and make sure that we've gotten up to 180 degrees and then we will talk about the next step. Okay, so it's been about 25 minutes and my Instant Pot just beeped. So now what I'm gonna do is take the lid off and check the temperature. Remember, we wanna make sure that this, uh, the milk is at about 180 degrees. So um, you don't really have to worry about there being too much um, pressure and changing it to venting or anything like that, but there will be a little suction. So I'm just gonna take the lid off, Oop, little suction. And um, it can be kinda hot, so you might wanna use pot holders and you're just gonna pull it out. And what we're gonna do is check the temperature and make sure that it's at 180 degrees. And at least around 180 degrees is good. And um, so it looks like we're gonna be at at 180. If it weren't at 180, if it were um, too low, what I would do is go ahead and put it back in the pot and turn it to, let's see, turn it to saute and just whisk it 
and keep checking the temperature. It should just take a few minutes until it gets up to 180 degrees, but we're pretty close. We're at about 178, so that's good. Um, now, all I'm gonna do is let this sit. Um, I, you might wanna keep it on a towel just so it doesn't ruin your countertops, but I'm just gonna let this sit. It should take about 30 minutes. It can take 30 minutes, it can take um, 40. Sometimes it takes an hour. What I wanna do is bring this back down to anywhere from 110 to 115. And um, if you're like me and you're forgetful, you can set a timer and come and check it about every 20 minutes. And so um, you just wanna make sure that you get it down to about 110, 115 degrees. So we're gonna wait and I'll see you guys for the next step. Okay, so it's been about 40, almost 45 minutes and this has cooled down. I've checked it and we're sitting at about 112 degrees. So that's good. We wanna be between 110 and 115. So now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the pot back in. And what I'm gonna do is go ahead and get two tablespoons of my starter yogurt here. So this is just that plain non-fat yogurt and it, you know, about two tablespoons. So it doesn't have to be perfect. The more you use, the more tart it's gonna be. So I'm gonna get about two and just put them straight into the bowl. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just take some of the milk and go ahead and put it into the bowl with the yogurt. Typically I do about five to six tablespoons, but um, as long as you get it mixed up um, really good, it doesn't matter. So I'm gonna go ahead and whisk it. And you just wanna make sure that you mix it together really, really well. And what you're gonna get is a pretty thick consistency. Just wanna break up all the little chunks. So I don't know if you guys can tell, but that's pretty thick. You know, thicker than milk, but not quite as thick as yogurt. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour it straight into the pot here. And then just mix it up really well. So this next step is where um, you're gonna have some time. So. You can go eight to 10 hours for the next step. Um, eight hours if you want a little bit of a less tart yogurt. And then nine to 10 hours, it's gonna be a little tangier. So I typically like to go eight hours. That's what we like in our family. So I'm just gonna put my lid on now. I've mixed that up really, really well. So this is where I messed up before. What you wanna do is you're gonna push your yogurt button until you get to normal, okay? So I've already got mine set to eight hours. Um, what you would do, let's see. So yeah, I'm already set to eight hours. So now this is gonna uh, go ahead and cook for eight hours and it's gonna turn into yogurt. What it's gonna do is count up to eight hours um, instead of, yeah, instead of counting down. You wanna make sure you've got your less, your normal, and your more down here. You wanna make sure that it's on normal, okay? If you do it on less, it is not going to cook right. So that's the mistake I made and ended up having to throw away back. So make sure you've got it to normal and then that you've set it to um, however long you wanna do it using the pressure cook button to adjust the time if you wanted to do more hours, but we're set at eight. So. Um, I'm gonna come back to this whenever this finishes up, so I will see you guys in a little bit. All right, you guys, so it has been eight hours. My Instant Pot just beeped. So now we're gonna move on to the last part of this, which is the straining, um, the straining phase. So let's take the lid off. And yeah, we've got yogurt in here. So what I've got, um, I talked about this before, but it's just um, a big bowl for it to strain into. And then I've got my strainer right here. And then there's some coffee filters in here. Um, you could use cheesecloth also, but coffee filters work just fine. So I'm just gonna scoop it out um, and put it straight into here, into these coffee filters. And then this is gonna sit overnight in my refrigerator. And some people just like to go ahead and um, you know, mix this up the way it is, but I like my Greek yogurt to be um, a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna strain some of this out. And what we're doing is we're separating the whey 
from the yogurt. And so you're gonna be left with um, a yellow liquid. That's gonna be the whey. And you can just um, you can just get rid of it. I know some people use it for baking and things like that, but I just empty it out um, the next day. So now that I've got that going, I'm gonna go ahead and pour the rest straight in. And now this will just sit in the fridge, like I said, overnight. And then um, I'll show you guys the final product tomorrow. All right, guys, so we are in the final stage of this homemade Greek yogurt process. My Greek yogurt has sat in the refrigerator overnight and strained. So you can actually see it's pretty thick. And then in the bowl, we've got the liquid that's drained out of the Greek yogurt. So this is the whey. So all I'm gonna do now is transfer this uh, the Greek yogurt into a container so that I can keep it in the fridge and some people like to keep their Greek yogurt pretty thick what I'm gonna do is scoop some of the whey into my container um, some of the liquid to mix it up I like my Greek yogurt thick but I like it to have a little bit of creaminess and um, liquid so you can see it's pretty thick and so now all I'm gonna do is get a few spoonfuls, pretty big spoonfuls here, oop, making a mess, of this whey. And then I'm just gonna combine it. And that'll give it a little bit more of a creamier texture. But if you like yours um, nice and thick, you don't have to add any. And if you like yours really creamy, you can add even more. So that is the last process. Now all that's left is to eat this. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment and let me know if you try it. And thanks for watching.